appreciate your prayers. Uh, I really do. Um, I'm completely healed up and uh, got a little, little bit of horse in my throat. That's just comes with the territory. I've had bronchitis before, so many times in the past it lingers a little bit. So bear with me today. I'm going to try to sing a song. But, but uh, I want to tell you, I love you and appreciate your prayers. And uh, Becky's doing better. She's got pneumonia. I'm not there to make her drink and eat. You know, she just kind of doesn't do it. But uh, anyway, so pray that the Lord will just give her a gunch from the drink. She's hard headed. She, that y'all make a beautiful cup. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, I said, you got a hard head and a hard head. That's not what it is. So, anyway. yeah, that's good. You know what? I, I love this song. But I, I, maybe I'll have to sing it a while. But no. If you would, I want to welcome you to Lighthouse Baptist Church. We're glad you're here this morning. Some, of, some people are out this morning, but uh, well, two or three gathered my name and said, I, there I am in the midst. Thank you. So, uh, how many of you watched Charles Stanley this morning? I got to watch the, uh, the last one, and it was called Drifting. And, uh, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you may say, well, I don't, need, I don't need to listen to that. You can listen to it. You know what? We'll all drift so quick and so fast. But the thing about it, the one thing that I knew, uh, and I've tried to hang on to, is to keep me, not Bart, not Gary, not Preacher Clinton, not Cindy, not you all, to keep me, but it'll, it'll work for you, to keep yes. me from drifting. I need fellowship with, with God's people. I need the Word of God. Talk about the, you know, counselors are wonderful. They are godly counselors. Thank God for them. And he was thanking God he had in his church. But here's the deal I can go to a counselor for two, or three, or four, or five years. A Christian counselor wants to help me. But if I don't repent, Sorry. and repent means a change of mind. Yeah. I'm not doing this anymore. Now, buddy, I'm going to tell you something. I've been out of church now for a month. Preacher Clinton, I drifted something. We all do. We all do. But, Bart, I'm going to tell you something. When I open the Word of God and begin to read it, I love it. And it puts me back in the saddle for me. But remember, repentance is what God is looking for. You know, David said, if, if, you, if you require sacrifice, that's I would give it over in Psalm 51. But a broken and a contrite heart, God will not despise. Repentance came to David. He did something about it. He said, I have a change of heart and a change of mind. Because God is not in this. I'm going back to God and do things His way. Because the thing about it is this. When you and I drift, and honey, I've drifted way out yonder. And yes, I went to God. God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. God forgive. God always forgives. Hey, and we would even say, hey, you know what, God? God didn't save the flesh. He saved the spirit. Don't use that why straight out of hell like I've done before. And like we, we've all done that. Your personal relationship with Jesus Christ is what God is looking for. Okay. Not necessarily you helping somebody else with their relationship with Christ. Your personal relationship. Yeah. Amen. And then, when you see in your heart what God is trying to show you, that's when repentance will come. And you will realize once again, how much he loves you and how much he misses you and how much you love him and how much you miss him. And you'll get rid of the garments, sin garments, in your life. And you'll begin to burn them in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I said, well, I don't want this. I want what you want. Didn't mean to be preachy this morning. I'm sorry. But I enjoyed 
listen to that. It's Carlton, I'm going to tell you something. When I listen to it, it hit home with me too. I usually read my Bible every day. Preacher Clinton, I got up this morning. And I think I think I read it Wednesday. Or Thursday, maybe. It's called drifting. See? The other thing to get in the way. Let's all stand this morning and turn to page 149. Here is a decision in this song. There's a decision right here for you and I, personally with Jesus Christ. Let's sing all three of these. I would get on the piano this morning, but I don't want to hurt your ears. So anyway, don't mess up the service. All right, 149, we'll sing all three stands. Everybody ready? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The younger sacrificial death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you that the tomb is empty, Lord, and now you're seated on the right hand of the Father to ever live it, to make intercessions for us. Lord, we pray that you would touch the singing and the preaching of your word today, God. I pray, God, that you would move across this place, Lord, only like the Holy Spirit can move. And I pray, God, just let it get foggy in here today, Lord. And God will thank you and God will praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. What a joy it is to serve the Lord. Amen. And let me say thank the, uh, thank the Facebook listeners for joining in and tuning in with us today. We want to give a special shout out to Sister Carol because I heard that it was her birthday yesterday. Amen. So we're going to sing to her in a little bit, but happy birthday, Carol. And I know you're listening to us on Facebook, so y'all got to smile because y'all on camera, amen. Y'all on video today, amen. It's good to see some visitors here. I done spoke to a couple of them, and I told this one uh, young lady back there, I said, you come two or three times, you already a member. We claim you, amen. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, she brought her friend with her, so we, and, uh, but we, we got visitor cards, and uh, we want you to fill it out and put it in the, uh, in the offering, amen. And then that way we can have... Uh, a record of your visiting here and uh, 
And uh, it's slowly filling up, preacher. Amen. What time is it? About 10, 15 after. <laughs> Amen. We might need to uh, push our start time up a little bit. Amen. But it, they're slowly coming in. But we appreciate you being here. Some of you have been out sick. And what a joy it is to have you to come. And um, and there's still some that we need to pray for. Uh, Cindy uh, Talbert, she's not uh, not Talbert anymore, but... Uh, but anyway, we miss Cindy, amen, so we just pray for her. She's got some uh, issues, so we just want to uh, pray for her and get her up. Now, this, let me just say this. There's opportunities for you to serve here at Lighthouse Baptist Church. We need children's church workers, amen. How many do we need? About a dozen, don't we, amen. We need children's church workers. We need, uh, we need you to get involved, amen. We need you to come to Sunday school. How many of you was at Sunday school today, amen? Didn't we have a good time? I about started preaching, amen. So make that a make that a priority and come to Sunday school at ten o'clock, amen. And uh, my my what opportunities we have, and uh, we have some finger foods on Sunday night, and we have uh, some of the sorriest Bible teaching they are, amen. But, <laughs> but we got some good finger foods. So that you come and be a part of our of our service on Sunday night Bible study. We'll fellowship for about thirty five or forty minutes. And then by 7 to 15, we'll have you out the door. Amen. I promise. Amen. Amen. you got to hold me to that, preacher. Amen. I, I, I can control you. Amen. <laughs> Bill Brantley's waving at me there. Amen. Good to see Brantley there with us today. He loves church. Amen. He went up to his preschool uh, Wednesday, and he says, he told his teachers, he said, yes, what, tonight is church night. Amen. Amen. Well, we need to all get excited about church. Amen. Amen. And yes, we do. We have a midweek Bible service. You didn't know that? Yeah. We have a midweek Bible service. We have Bible study up here on, on Wednesday night. And then we have the King's kids and the youth. So you got to be a be a part uh, of our church. Amen. Um, we're, mainly, we're, we're in the true church. Amen. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus told Peter, says, Upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. I mean, I'd be glad of that. Amen. I mean, I'd be glad to be saved. Amen. All right. Stand back up and the preacher's coming. Amen. Praise the Lord. I went to did a wedding yesterday. And it was outside, and I walked down to the man's shop and went down the hill. I think I overdid it. My legs are still down there. <laughs> I've got to come back. I don't awesome. really need this chair, but Charles Stanley's got one, so I don't <laughs> need one too. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. All right. Can I get my ushers to come and take up an offer? Go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Praise you got a special Lord. prayer request, and you'd like to make it known, we're going to do that by uplifting the hands. Thank God. I heard this morning that Les rung the bell. Yes. Yep. Amen. Yes, yes, he did. Thanks, God. That's what we were for sure, Les. Thank God. Preacher, can we also remember uh, Crystal and Renee's uh, mother passed away? Jeannie had called this morning, and she's there with them now. Uh, that's Terry Page's mother-in-law yes. that passed away. Too. So remember them as they're together right now. Amen. All right. So let's take us to the throne of the Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much, yes, Father, Lord. for who you are, Lord, and how you, Father, chose us thank you. to be your children. Lord, I thank you for all those who came out this morning, Lord. These, these people, Lord, could chose to be anywhere, but they chose to be here today. Yes. And I just thank you, Father, for what you've done already so far in Sunday school, Lord, the testimonies, Lord, that we heard this morning. I just pray, Father, Lord, as we come to give back to you, that it'll be for your glory and your glory only. Thank you, Lord, for supplying our needs. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Be amen. Anybody have a birthday this past week? I'm 85 We're going to sing to you. Happy birthday to you.
yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Happy birthday, Miss Carol. Amen. We're going to sing to you. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen. You ready, Rob?
Oh, we're for sakes, huh? For me. I need it. I need it. We all need it. Amen. Mm -hmm. We've all got heartaches. Yeah. We've all got worries and troubled waters in our lives. And when it begins to overwhelm us, thank you for that beautiful song, Mother. God yeah. bless you. Yes. When it begins to overwhelm us, yep. and we feel like we can't go on, God inhabits the praises of His children. Amen. Amen. And if we'll drop everything at His feet and bow our hearts to the Master, and lift up holy hands and praise Him. Yes. Our hearts will soar again. Amen. Amen. The joy will come back. Yes. The love will come back. And guess what? That big word that everybody admires but has trouble with, like I do, our obedience to our Savior yeah. will come back. Amen. That'll be our hearts, divine desires, like He's saying. Uh, you just listen to the words of this song. Man. Then don't listen to my old froggy voice.
greater is he that is in me and you can praise the earth away Yes. There is. 
saved, just like Daddy said, many times in a sermon, the pastor said it, he's not going to let you fall out of love with his grace. He won't. When you're saved and want born again, he's not going to let you do that. So we've got to put God first in our life because we don't know how much time we have left. That's right. You know, it's coming. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thankful that I'm on the inside. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. You know, we face battles every day. And it's like Roger said a while ago, he said, you know, I miss this place. I don't see how people are not coming. I've never had, I thank God, and I find these words in the name of Jesus, I've never had a non-desire for church. That's right. Never had. The first, and I'm proud of God, I'm proud of me, but about the first 10 years of my life was as a Christian, I never missed a single service. Amen. That was on Wednesday night, Tuesday night, and Sunday, Sunday night. I mean, I, and I love this place. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah, so good to us. You will. If you got your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me, if you would, in the book of Matthew. Matthew 16, and verse number 21. Now, my eyes are giving me a fit this morning. I'm facing another surgery. I got cataracts. Which that ain't too bad. But the words run together. So I got my, my buddy over here, Mr. Cox. <laughs> Mr. Gary Cox, Dr. Cox. <laughs> He's going to read the verse of Scripture. Amen. If you will, stand to your feet. Let's read it. Let's read it. His word, amen. amen. Um, Matthew 16, verses 21. Let's stand and honor God's word, amen. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and to suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and he said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up the cross, and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life, shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, shall find it. For what is it a man profiteth, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? Or what shall it a man give in exchange for his soul? Do you know that every day, every single day, Jesus gives us challenges? He challenges us because life is full of challenges. Now, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm here today only by the grace of God. Amen. I mean, when, you, when your doctor tells you you're going to die in five years, it's been 16 years. It's by the grace of God I'm here. And I, I want to be faithful to Him in any way I can because He challenges us with faithfulness. This is the hardest word the pastor ever hears. Yeah. When a pastor's heart breaks when he hears this, I can't count on Him no more. Neither can the Lord. I hope you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. There's so many that God's been so good to. Yeah. And I've known through the, through the years. Mm -hmm. And when they maybe get some age on them, then they cut their service down. So I seen my mom cry because she couldn't see to come to church. Yeah. That's the way it ought to be. Yeah, yeah, man. And I'm not talking about this Sunday morning. I'm talking about faithfulness. Yep. Serve God. 
But I'll tell you this, if your heart's not in serving God, you don't need to be here. Because God's going to spank you and you're going to come back one day, but this, it may take a couple spankings. Have you ever had a spanking? Mm -hmm. By God? Mm -hmm. It ain't pretty. And I don't like spankings. That's why I don't want to do it no more. Mm -hmm. But he challenges us to be faithful. And if you don't think it breaks the preacher's heart when, when people are not faithful, you're definitely wrong. Because it does. We read about prayer. We know the power of prayer. But there's so many people who don't pray. Yeah. And to understand that, I, only God can tell you, because I can tell you why we don't. I mean, it's a, it's a, the devil will make you bad if he can't make you busy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's backwards. <laughs> the devil will make you busy <laughs> if he can't make you bad. Amen. You know what you mean, brother. You got it. And so if he gets us busy, then we lack our in our prayer life. We know that there's power in prayer. We know the other day Cindy came walking through the house. And she said, Have you seen my shoes? They're black. Where are they at? I can't find them. It was last minute. We had to be on the road to go somewhere. And she said, Pray for my shoes. <laughs> we prayed. And there they lay, right there. <laughs> God's good. Amen. Amen. But we know the power in prayer. Yeah. We know the power. Yeah. You know, but we fail to, be, to show God that we love him enough. And you say, I love God. Yeah, I do too, but he wants us to talk to him yeah. and direct us. He challenges us to bring our problems to him. Mm. Why don't we go every direction first? And then after everything fails, then we go to God. Yeah. He, we read about people that have had amazing experiences. God's done this and done that for them. And then they show up on the news and don't say a word about God. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I want to praise Him before I do anything. In the morning, I'm going to get up praising him. I'm going to praise him when I go to bed. I'm going to praise him when I can't walk. I'm going to praise him when I can walk. I'm going to praise him until I, I shut my eyes in death. And that's all I want to do is see him say, Welcome in, good and faithful servant. Amen. That, that means everything to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I tell you, this past week's been a challenge. For me, yes, every morning I get up, I'm in terrible pain. But as the day goes on, I'm praising God more, it leaves me. Yeah. And I Amen. praise Him. And uh, and the devil told me the other day, he said, well, it's going to come back in the morning. What are you praising God for? I'll yeah. praise God till the morning comes, and then we'll praise Him some more. Amen, brother. Amen. God challenges us to bring our problems. Now, every problem has a settlement. You can settle your problems. But you got to go to God to do it. Man. I've heard people say, well, I ain't going to that church no brother so-and-so go to that church. Mm. Well, I ain't brother so-and-so. I don't act like brother so-and-so. Brother so-and-so has got that uh, account for his own sake. Yep. Mm -hmm. But if you can get out of church by using one person being in that church that you don't like, you got a problem, your faithfulness is not true, and you'll never get a prayer answer until you get that out of your system. Amen. Yeah. Preach, brother. Let me tell you something. I have found out that I have apologized to a lot of people a lot of times yeah. and thought that I was right. But confusion <laughs> is of the dead. Amen. Revival is not walking the aisle. Mm. Revival is walking across the aisle. That's right. That's Amen. what revival Preach. is. <laughs> so if we bring our our praise and our problems and everything to Jesus, he'll take care of it. And this is going to hurt. So, so hold on. It's going to hurt now. Jesus uh, help us. He challenges us to surrender our money to him. Mm. You say, oh no. And I don't preach on tithes much. I don't know what you tithe. I don't, that's none of my business. But I'm going to tell you something. It's God's business. Right. It's his anyway. Amen. He know what 
is, is challenged to surrender my money to him. Yes. Without God's help, we would never make it. You know, preacher Wes Lanier told me one time, he said, when he was a young preacher, he said he laid his money out at the end of the week and said it never added up on paper to be able to pay his bills and tithe. He said, but he tithed anyway and said every week God gave him enough to get through. Amen. We, Amen. we get through where we, where we uh, know what, I mean, God does things we don't know about. I tell you, he prepares us now for things that's coming up. That's right. Mm. It's an old story. I've told it several times here, but me and Cindy was, we were in a church in Kannapolis, and I had a Volkswagen that I wanted to sell. That was back in the good old days when Volkswagen cost $700. <clears throat> well, this boy and girl and their two kids was moving back to West Virginia from, from Kannapolis. And uh, I had that Volkswagen for sale. He said, I sure would like to have that Volkswagen take my family back to West Virginia. But I can't afford it. God spoke to me. He said, give that boy that Volkswagen. Amen. So I gave it to him. Mm. Years later, i say two years, wouldn't you see him? Maybe a year. I got a phone call. Mm. It was him. He said, I've been doing good, got a good job, and I'm going to pay you for that Volkswagen. Amen. It was exactly the same time in my life that me and Cindy needed some money. Amen. God prepared that way over here, and he gave it to me way over here. Amen. Because he knew I was going to need it. If I had it over here, I would spend it. That Cindy should tell you that. <laughs> God's arm is never short. Amen. <laughs> I can right. tell you story after story how God has come through in my life. I can write a book on how he's took care of me and Sandy. And uh, I, 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 oftentimes I tell that, uh, you know, Sandy takes care of the money because I ain't able to. Uh, I like pretty things. And I like to buy them without no money. <laughs> So she takes care of me. But you know what? There's been times when I've thought to myself, how could I make it without God? And giving him a tenth of what he already owns, that's nothing. That's right. let, me you, let me break some news to you. You don't get a blessing to you pay over the tenth. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And that's when you get a blessing. That's right. Because he we already owe the tenth to him. But you know, there's been times when I couldn't make it and I thought, what am I going to do? And I always went to Cindy because she was encouraged me. Yeah. I said, Cindy, we ain't going to make it. And she said, yes, we are. We're going to make it. We're going to do it. So I went to her one day. I said, Cindy, we ain't going to make it. She said, I don't think we are. <laughs> <laughs> Had to be a little bit more on God then. But we made it. Now, this to God. Jesus challenges us to seek the lost. Amen. What is our job? Our job is to win people to Jesus. Right. I mean, that's one thing this church is well known for. We they did a lot of people saved here. And I thank God for that because the last one one day is going to get saved somewhere. Yeah. And we're going to go home when the bride's complete. So Amen. our duty is, and, and me and Cindy both, we're the same. We, we made a vow. Wherever we go, when we just talk to somebody, we'll bring up Jesus. Amen. And you can get to talk to some of the best people, Christians already. And and then you got some that's, well, I'll tell you, we went to Walmart the other day. I believe it was Walmart, might have been loaded. And we come out of the flower place over there. And Cindy said to the little girl there, she said, Gee, God is good. Isn't he? And she went, <laughs> Most of them will say, you better believe it. God's so good. He does so much for me. You can get, you get to talk and spend 20 minutes instead of talking to somebody about mm -hmm. Jesus. But you know what? We must accept the challenge. Amen. If you don't accept the challenge, then it ain't going to work. Before we are growing Christ, yeah. you got to accept the challenge God gives yeah. you. Now, people are not 
God fearing like they used to be. That's right. We're living in a time when it's confusion everywhere. People have split because even from being friends because their idea of this and that is different. Yeah. Our government is split in half. Our people, but let me tell you something, enjoy what you got here now. Yeah. Because yeah. one day it may come and it may come soon. We may not be able to serve God in this building. We may have to hide in the basement somewhere like you do in foreign countries. They may try to put a pistol to your head and get you to deny Christ. So I believe I would enjoy every minute you got a serving God yeah. together. Do you accept the challenge? If you don't, you got a bad problem. But if you do, you got some good times coming because God's going to be right there to take that promise and do. He's got an answer. Yes, he does. May not be exactly what we want, yeah. but he's got an answer. That's right. And he's going to give it. He answers every prayer. Yes. Every one. Maybe a yes, no, or a wait to later, but he answers them. And it's the best for him to answer. Amen. Never head bowed, never eye closed, just stand your feet for me. I'm not sure if you lost or saved today, but I guarantee you one thing. You know if you are. He does too. So I'm going to ask you this. Do you have anything you take to the altar today? If you're not saved, please come. If you're saved, that you need to surrender more to God. If you need to answer the challenges He gives you, the altar's open. I pray you'll come. Set the challenges because there's going to be plenty of them in our future. It'll be human. The world's wicked. God's good. Amen. 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 Our announcement. We have prayer cards up front. If you have a prayer request, fill out the card, put it in the box. Prayer warriors will pray for those on Wednesday nights.
We have the missions jar up front on the table. Anything that you put in that jar helps support our nine missionaries. We're also um, still collecting butterflies, so if you want to make them, color them, whatever, um, get those into Cindy and she'll get them turned in to the radio station. We have Bible study tonight at 6 o'clock with Finger Foods. Come on out to um, join us for that. And then we have a revival coming up the October 10th. October 10th. Uh, through what? 14th. Through the 14th. Um, Randy Perry will be doing our revival, so come on out and support that. And then also the third Sunday in October, I don't know what that date is yet, but I'll try to remember next Sunday, is our monthly meal, and we'll also be celebrating Pastor Appreciation then. Also, I just thought of something. I want to thank all y'all. Michelle did such a great job uh, keeping up with our money. Our church was number one in Stanley County at Walk for Life. <laughs>